some showers out there for us this morning, but the rain is likely to intensify overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. I'll show you how much more rain is in our forecast. And folks, we have team coverage this morning from the Triangle to the coast. We are tracking Tropical Storm Debbie as it brings rain and wind to our state. We're also seeing the effects of the storm from our live camera network. That is how we are showing you this live look at Carolina Beach. Plus, we've got you covered on the Olympics. Team USA cruising to the top of the medal count in Paris. We have a look at Gabby Thomas's big finish that brought in a gold for the country. We always like to see gold medals, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> we'll have more on that coming up. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. I'm Chris Lovingood. Yeah, we do want to get to more Olympic stuff in just a bit. We've just really got to talk about Tropical Storm Debbie. Yeah. We've got meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner who's tracking that right now with a dual Doppler 5000 radar. <laughs> And we're going to start off looking at radar. We've had a few isolated showers, a little bit of drizzle from the Triangle area northward this morning. We have a, a rain band from the coast that started to move inland. It weakened a little bit, but we are seeing some scattered showers around Goldsboro, parts of Johnston County, uh, up around Wilson County, back to uh, Harnett County as well. Uh, that's going to continue to push inland. We're going to see some scattered rain this morning, but nothing terribly heavy. We don't get into any real heavy rain bands until later on this evening or overnight tonight. We do have a level one risk for severe, severe storms, mostly closer to the coast where there could be a few isolated spin up tornadoes, which is pretty typical with tropical systems as they begin to move inland. This storm doesn't look anything like it looked yesterday. We are starting to see a few of those rain bands intensifying a little bit. But yesterday we watched a rain band dump uh, a foot of rain in Charleston. So what's happened is drier air has worked its way into the system. It does look like it would re-intensify a bit as it moves northward, getting into tonight and into tomorrow. We take a look at future cast and you can see around 9 or 10 o'clock, just some scattered showers that roll in. But watch what happens. More intense bands by this evening. There's 5 o'clock. There's 8 o'clock. So some of those southern areas likely to see some heavier rain this evening. And then again tomorrow. And you can see that here in our rain chances. Uh, they go up to around 80% late this afternoon and this evening. A brand new 8 o'clock advisory. This storm is moving northeast at four miles per hour and that is down from five. So almost just sitting and spinning here off the coast of, of uh, South Carolina. The wind's at 45 miles per hour and it will continue to trek northward slowly and then begin to pick up some speed as it moves across North Carolina as a tropical depression during the day Friday. And Friday's the day that we might have enough wind to uh, bring a few isolated power outages. Um, updated rainfall totals three to five in the north, six to nine down south. Uh, most of this is going to be tonight and into the day tomorrow. So Flooding is still our main uh, issue. Probably not going to see any flooding today, but tonight and tomorrow that will be an issue. And then Friday will be the day that we'll see the strongest winds. We'll talk about uh, how strong we may see and where we may see some outages. Ken? Uh, Elizabeth, happening now in the WRL Traffic Center, just a handful of incidents to tell you about, just to make sure that you're aware of what's going on. We're studying uh, northern Durham County. This crash on I-85 in the northbound lane, Lake Club Boulevard, we're told that uh, has been moved to the shoulder of the road, so not really affecting your morning commute if I-85 northbound is part of that uh, morning commute, so nothing to worry about there. Uh, down in Gardner, we're monitoring this crash on Timber Drive in the westbound lane near Benson Road. We're not seeing any problems for you this morning based on our live traffic sensors, so if you happen to be navigating Benson Road this morning, not a problem to report. Elsewhere around the Triangle and surrounding communities, we are seeing traffic beginning to build in the north side of the Beltline as well as a little bit on the south side of the Beltline, which is typical this time of the morning. With that in mind, let's take you outside to the northern part of the Beltline. This is Look at I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. The westbound lanes are moving away from us. Actually moving at a rather steady clip, won't you agree? And on the south side of the belt line, things are moving along nicely in both directions. All right, thank you, Ken. Tropical Storm Debbie starting to make its presence known across the Carolinas. This is a live look over Myrtle Beach where you see the waves and rain there. Our team coverage for Tropical Storm Debbie's arrival in North Carolina takes us to the coast. WRL's Kelsey Coffee is live on Wrightsville Beach. Kelsey, storm surge, a very big concern there and the large amount of rain expected. <laughs> Michelle, that's exactly what the greatest concern is right now. In the last half hour, I told you about how there was a person that was out on the water in a kayak and it got turned over. Well, I was able to speak to him. He says that he is okay, and this is something that he doesn't recommend doing, especially since there's a sign there that says no lifeguard on duty. We'll take you to video now from a driving shot yesterday. You can see water there on the roads as outer bands from Debbie started moving through the area. Our meteorologist team says we could see anywhere between 6 and 10 inches of rain between now and Friday. We spoke with vacationers here on the beach like Laura Morris from Chicago. 
we are home, we know where flashlights are, we know where like lanterns, we know how to navigate and just being in a rental house, not being familiar with what our options are, um, we're kind of leaning towards going. So Morris's family is considering cutting their trip short like a lot of vacationers here. I was able to check in with Morris late last night. She says that three of the people that she traveled with have decided to head home early. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Wrightsville Beach. And you know, here in the Triangle, we aren't seeing heavy rain, mostly lighter stuff, but we are seeing more flight cancellations. WRL's Laura Levine is live at RDU where she is showing us how the weather is affecting travel there. I see more and more people behind the TSA line behind you, Laura. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, and we've been keeping our eyes on the TSA lines as well as the board here this morning. We continue to see cancellations and delays. Delays now up to 17. That has continued to increase as the morning progressed. Cancellations standing steady at 17 as well. We're looking at the arrivals board because that's where we're mostly seeing a lot of the cancellations. So the flights coming into RDU, especially from New York. As you mentioned here, the TSA line, we're seeing some people move through here. But again, we're not seeing long lines because flights schedules are so inconsistent. Uh, well, we're just speaking with a chauffeur, actually, who was looking at the board. He was waiting on a, a client coming in from Boston, and he told me, you know, he's pretty much used to this when it comes to the airport, but especially when you're dealing with a major storm. We know Debbie had begun uh, impacting travel as early as Sunday with thousands of cancellations across the country. So this is something that we will continue to monitor throughout the day. Laura Levine, WREL News, live at RDU. And Wake County schools will operate on a regular schedule today after all school activities are canceled. Several other school districts are making changes because of the storm. Harnett County is moving to remote learning today and tomorrow. Hope County is closing early today and Cumberland County is moving to asynchronous learning Thursday and Friday. Governor Roy Cooper will hold a news conference today about how the state is getting ready for a tropical storm, Debbie. That news conference is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning, and you can watch it live on Fox 50, WRL News Plus and WRL.com. And folks, just a reminder, we are going to be with you throughout the storm until the threats are over. We have team coverage from the WRL Severe Weather Center to the coast and right here in our area. Kamala Harris and her newly named running mate Tim Walls will take their campaign to the Midwest today. They're scheduled to make stops in the key battleground states of Wisconsin and Michigan. Harris formally introduced Walls as her running mate at a campaign event in Philadelphia yesterday. Walls is the governor of Minnesota and a former congressman. And Michelle, Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance is following a similar tour schedule as Harrison Walls. He also has events planned in Wisconsin and Michigan today. He was in Philadelphia yesterday for a rally while they were there, too. And he criticized Walls for his reaction to the 2020 protest in Minneapolis after the death of George Floyd. Vance has postponed a campaign stop he had scheduled for a rally tomorrow because of Debbie. Today in Paris, Team USA will try to add to its lead in the medal count. That includes chances for more gold in track and field events. Here are some of what you can watch today on WREL. Our coverage starts at 9 o'clock with the women's speed climbing final. At 10, Team USA plays Poland in the men's volleyball semifinals. Track and field coverage begins at 1245. And that included the finals of the men's 400 meters and 300 meter steeplechase. And at 4 o'clock, catch men's beach volleyball as Team USA plays Cutter. And American star Gabby Thomas finished first in the 200 meter race. Her time of 21.83 seconds was nearly a quarter of a second faster than the second place finisher. That's huge in the world of track and field. This is Thomas's first gold medal in the Tokyo Olympics. She earned bronze in the 200 meter and a silver in the 4x100 relay. We have an Olympics viewing guide on WRL.com. That is where you can follow your favorite sports and your favorite athletes too. Find the complete schedule each day and what event is airing on which channel on WRL.com. Just search the words Olympics schedule. <laughs> Coming up, 500 military families will receive help getting their kids ready for the upcoming school year. The event in Fayetteville with a goal of preparing military children for a new school. We're live in Ocean Isle Beach with the latest preparations for Debbie as she comes ashore. 
And a few scattered showers for us this morning. We're looking at uh, an increased chance for rain as we get into the next 24 hours or so, especially tonight and into the day tomorrow. I'll show you how much rain is still coming our way coming up. Welcome back. You are looking live at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Check out the waves there. You're watching WREL News available on Hulu and the WREL app on your TV or streaming device. Here in North Carolina, especially where we are in Raleigh, Elizabeth, we're not really seeing a ton of rain right now. That's going to come later. It looks like overnight tonight and tomorrow in particular is when we'll start to see some heavy rain again. But we do have some patchy showers out there, especially down here uh, between Goldsboro and Smithfield, Four Oaks, uh, Benson seeing some rain. That's lifting northward across I-95 right now and may hold together all the way up into Wake County. So just some scattered showers out there this morning. Nothing terribly heavy. We're not likely to see a lot of heavy rain again until overnight tonight and tomorrow. Um, the whole system looks completely different than it did yesterday, and that's because it started to drag in some dry drier air. So the drier air is signified there in uh, the brown or just the uh, blank there uh, area on the map. And you can see where the rainfall is in green. So that's where all the moisture is. Um, this storm, of course, as, as all tropical systems do, uh, rotates counterclockwise and it grabbed a hold of some drier air and pulled it right into the center of the storm. And that's really dried things out in the last, uh, say, 12 hours or so. We're still having uh, the potential for some scattered showers this morning. And uh, after the evening commute, we may end up with some heavier bands. As a matter of fact, look at this on um, Thursday at 6 a.m. Some fairly heavy rain in the morning for the commute and at lunchtime, and that may continue on into the evening on Thursday. Some of the models are starting to trend as the center of circulation moves toward North Carolina, trending it a little farther west toward the Piedmont, and that may take some of the heaviest rainfall total back to the west. But that's a new uh, it's a new thing that we're just starting to see with the computer models. We'll see if that's consistent over the next 24 hours or so. We've seen some rain uh, in the last 24 hours two near Goldsboro, over two inches, uh, over an inch and a half in Fayetteville, uh, over an inch around Durham and Raleigh. So we had some significant rainfall yesterday, but nothing that would cause any major flooding. So we're watching the trend potentially for some of that heavier rain to be in the western part of the state. We still have the potential for five to ten inches of rain and possibly some flash flooding. River flooding uh, certainly looks more certain. We get all this rain and all that rain moves downstream and starts to create some issues on some of the rivers and also the chance for some isolated power outages especially by Friday. We still have an uh, extreme risk for flooding on Thursday. That looks like the day that will have the heaviest rain um, up to uh, say five to seven inches in the north, seven to ten um, in the south potentially. Um, and so heavy rain is still going to be our biggest impact. Now on Friday, as the center of circulation moves northward, we could see 20 to 40 mile per hour gust, maybe some isolated power outages. And tomorrow we have a level two risk for severe storms in our some of our eastern counties for some of those spin up tornadoes. Cape River and at Cape Fear River at Fayetteville could uh, cr crest at moderate stage at about 55 uh, feet, and that would be some overflow on the left bank downstream of the NC-24 bridge. Also, the Lumber River at Lumberton tends to climb pretty quickly, and during the day tomorrow, it may climb up to major flood stage for a while. Uh, we're looking at some winds gusting anywhere from 35 to maybe 40 miles per hour across our area, and that could mean some isolated to scattered power outages on Friday. Temperatures stay cool while we're seeing the system across our area. And it's not just us, of course. We're looking at some impacts along the coast. I'll show you what some of the strongest winds so far have been there. Coming up, Ken. Well, Elizabeth, all new into the W Ariel Traffic Center. We're monitoring a handful of incidents donning our live traffic sensors this morning. Uh, one crash that we want to tell you about is in the southern part of Wake County this morning. It happened uh, in the last 15 minutes or so. Now, we're just getting wind of it right now. Uh, it's uh, right now on uh, Lake Wheeler Road in the southbound lane near Penny Road. You can see the huge backup it's causing right there on on uh, Lake Wheeler Road. I would recommend using Highway 401 as an alternate route just to get around uh, Lake Wheeler Road this morning. I know many of you coming from Lake, uh, from the southern part of the state, uh, use that uh, particular area. This crash on 85 near Club Boulevard has cleared, which means that nothing is happening there and you don't have to worry about it. Cleared probably within the next last minute or so. We're following a disabled vehicle on Dixie Trail in the southbound lane near Lake Boone Trail, not causing any problems for you this morning. It's probably off to the side of the road as police assist that motorist right there. A Capitol Boulevard crash in the northbound lane near Thornton Road. Our life sensors are not picking up any major issues for you, so nothing to worry about. Elsewhere around the triangle, we're seeing a bit of a slowdown there coming in on US-1 out of Wake Forest. Coming up, I'll take a look at that and let you know how much of a delay you're looking at coming in from Wake Forest.
All right, thank you, Ken. We continue our team coverage of Tropical Storm Debbie, and WRL's Grace Holland is on Ocean Isle Beach. Grace, it's very windy where you are right now. And just in the last few minutes, that pelting rain has really returned coming in right from my right as that wind blows it into my face. Of course, you see the surf is very unsettled and rough out there. We've seen some people walking around ever since the rain started. People have gone back inside, but people are really just trying to get a, a sense of things as those voluntary evacuations are going on. We know that a family from Pennsylvania said last night that they were planning on leaving a day early because of this. Earlier, I talked to a man from Cary who said that at this point he is planning on staying, but he really praised uh, Ocean Isle Beach's town communications on this. They've been giving a lot of updates. I actually, uh, in the last hour, talked to the mayor. She said that there's been no changes to their forecasting still, that six to ten inches of rain that they're expecting, two to four feet of storm surge, of course, as the surf is starting to move up and up the beach as I stand here. Also, I want to mention that Brunswick County does have a shelter that's opening in the next hour at 9 a.m. for anyone that needs it. That's going to be at Town Creek Middle School. Live in Ocean Isle Beach, Grace Holland, WREL News. Certainly ramping up there. Tropical Storm Debbie is creating dangerous conditions on the roads in South Carolina. I want to show you a photo here from police in Conway. That's near Myrtle Beach. You can see right there that red car stranded in high water. A witness says first responders were able to rescue an elderly driver from that vehicle. Police say that it's important to remember, do not even try driving through water that deep. Four people are now charged with a murder in connection with the death of a man outside a Milwaukee hotel in June. Now, we want to warn you that this surveillance video is very disturbing. Two security guards, a door attendant, and a front desk agent are now charged in the death of Devontae Mitchell. Milwaukee's medical examiner says Mitchell died from suffocation as well as the effects of multiple drugs. His death was ruled a homicide. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump is representing Mitchell's family. He has compared Mitchell's death to George Floyd's. People in Fayetteville are rallying against gun violence in honor of a seven-year-old killed. He died during a drive-by shooting. A seven-year-old. People gathered yesterday at the home on Danish Drive. That's where Zion Gibbs died June 7th. Police say that a stray bullet came through a window and hit him in the head. He was playing video games at the time. Fayetteville Police Chief Ken Braden spoke during the rally to show his support for Zion's mother. Zion Gibbs is a great tragedy for our community and out here to support Myra today and what she's trying to do to help remember him and bring awareness to gun violence. I think it's key for our police department to be a part of this event. And police urge anyone with information in Zion's death to come forward. Today, the National Transportation Safety Board's investigative hearing into Boeing's mid-air door plug blowout earlier this year enters its second day. Tuesday's testimony revealed that people who work on the Boeing 737 MAX told investigators they felt pressure to do their jobs too quickly. A preliminary investigation found the plane left a factory in October without the four bolts needed to secure that door. Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun plans to step down after the hearing ends today. It was previously Previously announced that he would leave at the end of the year. Hamas has named Yahya Sinwa as the group's new political leader. Sinwa will replace the former Hamas leader who was recently assassinated. Sinwa has served as the Hamas leader in Gaza. And covering Wake County, a viewer shot a video that shows the moments before an EF1 tornado touched down in Wake County. Take a look at this. The tornado hit the Fuquay Varina area around 5.30 Saturday afternoon, reaching wind speeds of 100 miles per hour. The National Weather Service confirmed the strength of that rotation. The path spanned a mile and a half, uprooting trees and damaging the dugouts at Fuquay Varina High School. Happening today, hundreds of military kids in Fayetteville will get backpa backpacks filled with school supplies. It's part of the nonprofit Operation Homefront's Back to School Brigade. This is video from last year's event. This event offers a chance for families to meet others from their community. And it's also a chance to relieve some of the anxiety military children may have when changing schools. And we are just one day away from the NFL's preseason kickoff for the Carolina Panthers. The team will practice today before headed to New England to face the Patriots tomorrow. Kickoff is at 7, and yes, you can watch the game live on Fox 50. 
coming up, one person is hurt after a crash involving a tanker truck earlier this morning. What we know about the crash in Durham County that sent the truck into a minivan, then a tree. And we do want to get you another live look this morning at Myrtle Beach as rain is coming from Debbie. This is something we have been tracking all morning. Things getting a little more ominous looking outside. We're going to check back in live at the North Carolina coast with conditions there. Stay safe with the latest WRL weather alert day info. Get up to the minute weather and traffic conditions when you get in your car. In Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. You're taking a live look at Wrightsville Beach this morning. You can see the waves really picking up. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking Tropical Storm Debbie as it pushes closer to us, Elizabeth. There's been a rain ban down there near Wrightsville uh, this morning, and some of that rain has been pushing inland, but as it moves inland, it's weakening a good bit. So we do have some scattered showers south and east of Raleigh along the I-95 corridor, especially there in Johnston County, but nothing heavy right now, and it's not likely to be anything heavy until much later this evening, potentially around or past the evening commute overnight and definitely into the day tomorrow. It looks like we'll have some heavier rain. So tonight and tomorrow we could see an additional three to five inches in the north and maybe six to nine down south. Still on the lookout for the potential for some flooding. Um, it's cloudy and a little breezy in downtown Raleigh right now. And uh, of course, we're going to continue to watch for flooding again tonight through the first part of the day on Friday. Ken. All right, Elizabeth, happening now in the WO Traffic Center. The traffic is picking up in the usual spots this morning on the north side of the Beltline as well as the south side of the Beltline. We are seeing a bit of a slowdown coming in from Wake Forest this morning and all those major routes including uh, US 1. It's going to probably add a bit of uh, around four minutes to your drive time coming in from Wake Forest but all the other roads are delay free this morning. Taking a look at the major routes into the Bull City this morning. Very little to no delays heading into Durham. Ken. Governor Ray Cooper will hold a news conference today about how the state is getting ready for Tropical Storm Debbie. That news conference is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning. You can watch it live on Fox 50, WREL News Plus and WREL.com. Next on Fox 50, we'll check back in live at the coast as Debbie's outer bands dump rain on the eastern part of the state. And next on today, Colleen Hoover on the making of the new movie based on her bestseller, It Ends With Us. Seeing some scattered showers this morning, but this evening and overnight, the rain is likely to intensify. I'll show you how much more may be coming our way. And we have team coverage this morning from the Triangle to the coast and right here in the WREL Live Center as Debbie makes its way into our state. And an unstoppable 20-year-old taking home gold in Paris. Amit Alor now becoming the youngest Olympic wrestling gold medalist in U.S. history. We have that and big events that you are going to want to pay attention today. Yes, pay attention to that, but obviously also pay attention to our coverage of Tropical Storm Debbie. We'll get yeah. into that in just a second. Thanks for joining us here at WRL News and Fox 50. I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Yeah, let's get right over to meteorologist Elizabeth Garner. She has exactly where Debbie is right now. We're not seeing a ton of rain where we are, Elizabeth, but it's coming later. It uh, definitely looks like it may. We take a look at what's happening right now along the I-95 corridor right here in Johnston County over toward Goldsboro and even Greenville. We're seeing some scattered showers. We had a heavier rain band sitting just north of Wilmington a few hours ago, and as it's moving inland, it is starting to weaken a little bit. The reason that this storm looks so much weaker today than it did yesterday is we've started to see some drier air working its way in. We still have some scattered showers. You can see that around Wendell, around uh, North Raleigh, and back over towards, say, Durham and Chapel Hill. So definitely to have some rain today, but nothing that's going to cause any flooding for you today. Our best chance of any severe storms or isolated tornadoes will be closer to the coast, uh, but portions of Wayne County and Sampson County are in that level one risk. I do feel like closer to the coast is where we'd have a better chance. And this looks so much different than it did yesterday. The center of circulation is uh, out here over at the Atlantic, sending over some warmer water, and it may begin to bring in some of that more moist uh, air and helping to produce some heavier rain overnight with some of those rain bands. But um, things really 
fizzled out overnight with that uh, push of drier air into the system. As we get through the next few hours, we'll continue to see some scattered showers and the rainfall likely to pick up after the evening commute and become much heavier overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. This afternoon, we're looking at a 50 to 60% chance, but an 80% chance around and after the evening commute. This thing is just crawling out here, moving northeast at only four miles per hour, um, likely to hang out off the coast of South Carolina and then pick up some steam and move faster across North Carolina on the on Friday as a tropical depression. On Friday, we'll have the best chance of seeing some winds that could produce some isolated power outages. Updated numbers around three to five inches in the north, six to nine down south. That's where some of the heavier rainfall will be coming up. We're going to talk more about so when we start to see uh, all this moving out of here. Ken? Uh, hey, Elizabeth, happening now in the WO Traffic Center. Don't be alarmed at all the uh, incidents you see on our live traffic sensors this morning, but there are a few that we want to make you aware of. This one is a serious crash on Lake Wheeler Road uh, near Penny Road. You can see it's causing some serious backups there on Lake Wheeler Road. I would recommend using Highway 401 or Fayetteville Road as an alternate route to avoid the backup that you're seeing right there on Lake Wheeler Road. I know many of you use that coming in from Southern Wake County. Another crash is a serious one on 1010 Road in the eastbound lane near uh, US-1 North. That's not causing any problems for you on 1010 Road or US-1, but just look for some police activity in that area. We're also monitoring a crash on Capitol Boulevard in the northbound lanes near Thornton Road. Again, not seeing any problems on a, based on a live traffic sensor, so not going to delay you at all whatsoever. Elsewhere around the Triangle surrounding communities, we're seeing a little bit of a backup for many of you coming in from Wake Forest. If you're getting on the road right now in US-1, we just checked. It's going to add probably about a four-minute uh, delay to your commute. Right, thank you, Ken. This morning, the outer bands of Tropical Storm Debbie are being felt all across the Carolinas, or rather on the coast, that is. This is a live look at Wrightsville Beach and Myrtle Beach. You can notice there the cloud coverage and things looking a little ominous there. We have a lot going on this morning, including our teams live here this morning, the Triangle and on the coast as Debbie moves closer. Let's start with WRL's Kelsey Coffee in Wrightsville Beach. Kelsey, what are you seeing right now? I can see the, uh, the tides moving behind you. Chris, right now we're not seeing any rain, but we've experienced wind consistently throughout the morning. 21 counties, uh, coastal counties in North Carolina have evacuation zones. Wrightsville Beach is one of them because of the high risk of storm surge and flooding. So you can see the rough surf out there, and there's a sign there that says no lifeguard on duty. So anyone who's out here on the in the water is doing that at their own risk. We'll show you some video now from yesterday, a driving shot. You can see water there on the roads as out bands from Debbie started moving through the area. Our meteorologist team says we could see anywhere between six and ten inches of rain between now and Friday. We spoke with vacationers here on the beach like Laura Morris from Chicago. She was expressing her concerns ahead of the storm. Will the roads be flooded? Will flights be canceled? Um, will we have electricity? And there are a lot of other vacationers here, like uh, Laura Morris, who are trying to consider what they're going to do. I just spoke with someone who works at a nearby motel, and she says that they've had a lot of cancellations. So we've checked in with Morris's family. She says that some of them have decided to cut that trip short. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Wrightsville Beach. And here in the Triangle, we aren't seeing any particularly heavy rain yet, but we are seeing more flight cancellations. WRL's Laura Levine is live at RDU International to show us how Debbie's impacting travel by air, Laura. Michelle, good morning. Well, listen, for people who are traveling uh, from RDU, uh, they're somewhat in good shape. We are seeing a few delays and cancellations here on the departure board, but people who are heading to Atlanta, you're good. People who are heading to parts of uh, Chicago, Cincinnati, you're good. But if you take a look at this video, here's a look at the arrivals where we're seeing the most of the cancellations and delays, especially from JFK in New York. We know we have 17 cancellations, 18 delays out of RDU this morning. A lot of people who I've been speaking with, you know, they are kind of expecting it since they are traveling in the midst of the storm happening, but still hoping to get to their final destination. We're kind of getting a mixed bag of people we're speaking with, right? Some who may be frustrated about the situation and others who are just kind of going with the flow. Take a listen. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just I'm tired. I'm ready to get on my flight, get home. But if it gets delayed, it's not a big deal. Kind of rolling with the punches, yeah. right? 
Yeah, so that was William heading to uh, Michigan. He says that he's just kind of going with the flow of things. Hopefully that he won't get delayed too uh, too much throughout the day. But obviously you just got to deal with it, right? We're dealing with the situation here at the airport, continuing to track those cancellations and delays for you throughout the day. Laura Levine, WRL News, live at RDU. And let's take a live look at Ocean Isle Beach this morning. Coming up in 10 minutes, our team coverage continues with WRL's Grace Holland. She'll join us live with the conditions there as a voluntary evacuation order is in effect. And Jeff, welcome to the WRL Live Center tracking Debbie. Interesting to see where some of these bands have moved through and where they're clearing out and waiting for another round because we're not quite done with this yet. Charleston, by the way, we followed this yesterday because dozens of roads in Charleston were underwater. The curfew there has been lifted because this is Folly Beach, not far from Charleston right here. Uh, that curfew in Charleston lifted because there's only one road left that is still closed there as uh, Debbie drinks in a little bit of dry air in that area. Not far from where Grace Holland will be. We'll visit with her in just a few minutes right there. But this is uh, Surf City Pier, uh, the fishing pier right there as you look. Obviously rain on the lens right there as you see and a wet deck on that fishing pier and the waves climbing as uh, this storm moves up our coast. I'm going to take you all the way up, though, uh, to Outer Banks area. And this is Jeanette's Pier. Uh, right there as we look at uh, this camera here just turning that's that's pretty far up north from where this storm has gotten not quite there just yet but we continue to track Debbie as it moves up our coast into North Carolina certainly waters you don't want to be in today thank you Jeff Way County Schools will operate on a regular schedule today all after school activities those are canceled several other school districts are making changes because of the storm Lee County announced not long ago that it is moving to remote learning today Harnett County is remote learning today and tomorrow. Hope County is closing early today and Cumberland County is moving to asynchronous learning tomorrow and Friday. And for a full list of closings, you can go to WREL.com. Governor Ray Cooper will hold a news conference today about how the state is getting ready for Tropical Storm Debbie. That news conference is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning. You can watch it right here on Fox 50, WREL News Plus, and WREL.com. And live dual Doppler 5000 radar is at your fingertips on our WREL News app. Stay updated with us throughout the storm by making sure to sign up for the alerts. One person was hurt because of a crash on I-85 this morning involving a tanker truck. This is video from the WREL breaking news tracker. This crash happened just before 3 o'clock this morning in Durham County near East Club Boulevard. Troopers say the tanker truck hit a minivan and then a tree, but no one in the minivan was hurt. The truck driver suffered minor injuries, but in this case, no charges were filed. Team USA will try to outdo their already impressive performance in track and field today. Let's get you some of the big events we have for you today on WREL. Our coverage starts at 9 o'clock with the women's speed climbing final. At 10, Team USA plays Poland in the men's volleyball semifinals. Track and field coverage starts at 1245, and this includes the men's 400-meter and 3,000-meter steeplechase finals. Now, at 4, you can catch men's beach volleyball as Team USA plays guitar. A 20-year-old wrestling star showed her unstoppable dominance in Paris. Check this out. Amit Allure won gold in wrestling's 68-kilogram division yesterday. She is now the youngest Olympic wrestling gold medalist in U.S. history, male or female. And get this, the back-to-back -back reigning champion of the world has not lost a match in five years. Impressive. Let's take a look at where the medal count stands right now. The U.S. still in the lead with 86 medals. China is in second place with 60 medals and host country France in third place with 48 medals. And to help keep you help keep track of the day's Olympic Games, we have a viewing guide on WRL.com where you can follow your favorite sports and athletes. Find the complete schedule day by day, what's on each channel and streaming on WRL.com. Just search Olympic schedule. From South Carolina to Florida, we have a look at some of the damage left behind as Debbie pushes along the coast. We are going to show you the inside of a now destroyed Arby's restaurant. Grace? Coming up in the next few minutes, I'll show you a look at conditions here in Ocean Isle Beach.
844, taking a live look at dual Doppler 5000 radar. Just some scattered showers, especially south and east of the Triangle. There was a heavier rain band on the coast that started to move our way and uh, began to fizzle out a little bit. We're seeing this storm look a lot different today than it did yesterday because it's dragged in some drier air. It does look like it will re-intensify some overnight tonight and tomorrow, and that's going to bring us our best chance of seeing any flooding. Not likely to have any flooding or any terribly heavy rain for today, but this evening and overnight, that may change. Four Oaks, Smithfield, up here along the I-95 corridor toward uh, Lucama. We have this just band of some steady rain that is going to continue to lift on up toward Wake County and uh, up through Wilson County as well. So a few scattered showers with that this morning. If we take a look at the system, if you happen to look at it yesterday, yesterday it had some intense rain bands all around it. But overnight last night, it dragged in some really dry air. So this is our water vapor loop and the, uh, the, the black or brown shaded areas are where it's pretty dry. And of course, the green shaded areas where we have some of the rain falling. Now, as the system moves out, it's sitting now over the Atlantic, very warm water here, the Gulf Stream, that may help to re-energize it a little bit. And uh, a lot of that dry air may end up being sort of squeezed out of the system. Here's a look at future cast as we get through lunchtime, just some isolated showers, some scattered rain during the evening commute. But look at this, by tomorrow morning, it gets heavy again. And that's where we could see some additional inches, maybe even enough for there to be some flooding. That continues during the day Thursday, but then the center of circulation starts to push through on Friday, and that would put an end to some of that uh, heavier rain. Uh, looking so far at about two and a half inches of rain in Goldsboro. We've had a little bit additional rain there and an inch and a half in Fayetteville or so, about uh, an inch and a quarter around the triangle. And then tomorrow, we do have that higher flood risk there of extreme. We updated the forecast rainfall totals a little bit, um, looking at around four to seven in our northern counties, around six to nine in our southern counties. Of course, um, this has been a very slow moving storm. And meteorologist Chris Michaels has an interesting analogy for that. Chris? Hey there, Elizabeth. Yeah, and as of the latest update from the National Hurricane Center, Debbie is moving at four miles per hour. On average, a human walks at a pace of 3.1 miles per hour. So this thing is really just walking along the coast of South Carolina right now. That's why you see those rain totals that Elizabeth was just showing you guys. That's why it's important that if you do see some uh, floodwaters that you do exactly what that red car just did. You just turn around. It may be inconvenient to you, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. There's a lot of low water crossings in the area, especially near Lake Wheeler. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, especially heading into tomorrow. Reason why we talk about flooding so much is that tropical systems, when you're talking about direct fatalities uh, from tropical systems, 37% of them uh, come from inland flooding. So we just, uh, a lot of those uh, fatalities, by the way, they are preventable by turning around whenever there's uh, floodwaters nearby. Something we'll keep an eye on even after the storm passes through. Major flooding is forecast for the Lumber River at Lumberton and the Black River in Tomahawk. Elizabeth and uh, Chris, of course, we know those numbers may continue to climb over the weekend as all that rain starts to rush downstream. So we get downstream um, along the coast. There could be as much as two to four feet of uh, storm surge, some beach erosion. They're going to see winds 40 to 45 miles per hour with some isolated tornadoes and then some additional rainfall as well. We do have a tropical storm watch from Moorhead City down to Surf City, and it's a tropical storm warning down a little closer to the Wilmington area. For us, the day that we'll see the heaviest rain is tomorrow. Keep that in mind making your plans. We may have some issues on the roads. And then on Friday, it'll be the breeziest day. We could see a few isolated reports of some wind damage or possibly some power outages. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. Now to Ocean Isle Beach, where a voluntary evacuation order is in place because of Tropical Storm Debbie. WRL's Grace Holland joins us live from Ocean Isle Beach. Grace, tell us what you're seeing right now. Well, it looks a little clearer than it did a little while ago here, Renee. As you can see, the rain has stopped following the, the rain or the wind rather has slowed down a bit. But of course, we know that more is to come. Several, several inches of rain, even some storm surge on the way as well. And right now, we're also starting to see more people come out when there's a break in the rain like this to kind of get a sense of things. We did talk to a man who drove down here from Cary yesterday about how this is affecting his plans. We're planning on being down here through the end of next weekend. Um, really hasn't changed the plans much at all. Certainly will change what we do the next two or three days. But usually after these storms, um, weather is beautiful after the storms. We're just hoping for no damage. 
right? Everyone just hoping that there is no damage, no one gets hurt. So far, so good. Of course, we also did hear from some folks last night coming on the other end of that debate of whether to stay or go. A family from Pennsylvania said that they were going to leave today instead of tomorrow because of this storm. And also in the next about 10 minutes, as I check my watch, we are going to see a shelter that Brunswick County is opening for folks who need somewhere to go. That is going to be at Town Creek, Win uh, Town Creek Middle School in Winnebo for anyone that needs it. Live in Ocean Isle Beach, Grace Holland, WREL News. Tropical Storm Debbie is expected to bring significant rain to the area this week, and that means outdoor family fun will be limited. Parents looking to keep their children entertained indoors do have some great options, though. WREL Lifestyle Editor Kathy Hanrahan is here with a list of indoor ideas for fun. So, Kathy, let's start a little bit about indoor playgrounds. You've got to get the energy out. These kids are going to want to be outdoors, but we can do things inside, okay? Whether your child enjoys trampoline parks or laser tag, there's so many options for indoor fun. We've got a list right now on WRL.com's family section. It breaks down a list of indoor play spaces by city. So we've got tons of them. Some really great options for families include like Defy Gravity. That's a trampoline park in Raleigh. They've got a space for kids to jump. They can even do dodgeball. You've got Galaxy Fun Park in Wake Forest with trampolines, go-karts, laser tag infinite ways to get their energy out. A lot of ways to exercise, a lot of movement that I'm seeing there. But what about options for families who want to do maybe some art projects standing still? <laughs> you know, like a rainy day, you just want to sit and paint or read or draw. Um, there's some great places locally that offer pottery and painting. Um, some best options, they've got supplies and they the mess stays there, which I love. Uh, Clay Station in Raleigh is one of my favorites. Um, a kids art studio and Color Me Mine and Canvas. Uh, and Carrie, they've got canvas and pottery options. You get your pottery and you sit and just paint them and they take care of the mess. See, that sounds like a good time, right? And families who want to maybe squeeze in a little education as well as fun, they're going to want to check out the next option, museums. So many museums, okay? And since they're indoors, you can go year round when it's hot, cold, rainy, sunny. Uh, the Museum of Life and Science in Durham has got a lot of great indoor exhibits. You've got Moorhead Planetarium, another great option. Uh, and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in downtown Raleigh, you've got the Dueling Dinosaurs exhibit. And I mean, it's, you could spend all day there. So there is an entire list of rainy day family fun that people can go to simply by going to WREL.com. We'll have that for you to look for yourself. Thanks, Kathy. A mandatory curfew is in place in Charleston, South Carolina until tomorrow morning. The WRL storm tracker was there yesterday as more of a more than a foot of rain fell. More than 60 roads are shut down because of flooding about 30 miles north of Charleston in Monk's Corner. A confirmed tornado destroyed an Arby's restaurant. It damaged other businesses, including a car dealership. Surveillance footage from the dealership caught the tornado on video. This was one of at least two confirmed tornadoes that hit South Carolina. Carolina on Tuesday. No injuries were reported. And people in southwest Florida are dealing with flooding. Video shows the neighborhoods in the town of Sarasota. Crews have rescued hundreds of people. The Army Reserve is going through neighborhoods and ready to help those in need. Raleigh police say that a person stole an Amazon van while the driver was making a delivery. Police say the van was stolen on West Morgan Street around 520 Monday afternoon. This van was later spotted getting onto I-40 at Wade Avenue. Investigators say, well, the driver went the wrong way on I-40 and was involved in several minor crashes. Officers were able to stop the van about a mile from the Harrison Avenue exit. That person was arrested and no one was hurt. WRL is working to learn what charges that person's facing. And before we go to break, here are the winning lottery numbers. Just in case you missed them, we'll get you another check on weather and traffic next.